What is up, awesome people of the internet? And welcome to another edition of Women's Basketball Weekly, your number one source for all things related to women's basketball on YouTube. Thank you so much for joining us, and we have a fantastic show to get to. So let's get into it. We start with the WNBA, uh, which kicked off their preseason yesterday on Sunday, April the 28th. It's an epic battle where over 180 players compete to be one of the 144 players that ultimately make a final roster for the WNBA's 12 teams. Though technically it's going to be less than 144 because there are several teams who do not have cap space to have 12 players on the roster. So Let's dive in a little bit and take a look at how some of these teams have started with training camp and some of the questions that we kind of have leading into the season. And we begin with the two-time defending champs, the Las Vegas Aces, who kicked off their training camp with 16 players currently competing for a chance to be one of the final 12 on the roster. Now, there are smiles all around, and the team is hooping, very much hooping, uh, and they have welcomed in newcomers Deja Fair and Kate Martin, uh, who are all taking their lessons in stride. Yeah, it's crazy because I've been looking up to these players for so long and to Coach Hammond for so long. And so to be alongside them right now, you know, it's it's a little surreal, but um, just how hard they go. They never take a rep off. And, uh, you know, I want to keep that mentality. And, you know, I just want to add to their success. I, I never want to take away. And so they've been super helpful with uh, everything. You know, I've had a lot of questions and they're answering and they've been super inviting with open arms. So, uh, you know, I'm just trying to emulate everything that they do. Basically to not, you know, get down on yourself about a mistake is new, everything's new. I'm not the only one here that doesn't know anything or know what what's going on really. And you know, just to have fun. That's the main thing and be myself is what they've been telling me to do. And with the news of Candace Parker retiring, that really does affect the Las Vegas Aces decisions, especially when it pertains to the post. Uh, with players like Angel Jackson, in my opinion, really now having a shot to actually make the final roster for the Las Vegas Aces. Uh, the Aces did add Megan Gustafson in the offseason, which is for sure very, very helpful for the squad going forward. But for me, the biggest question of the year is, will Becky actually play her bench? Time will tell. And guys, I can't talk about the Las Vegas Aces without talking about um, the, the, the face of the league in Sydney Colson, who... Um, had a very viral moment last year when uh, she she couldn't get into the Las Vegas Aces practice facility and was wondering if she got cut. Uh, and 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 they they uh, took some footage of her walking in this year. And, and here's here's here, here it is right here. Swipe your things. <laughs> Swipe yours. <laughs> you know what? Good morning. I'm gonna listen for the click, bro. <laughs> That's not what I used to do. This better. <laughs> it was already open. Oh. <laughs> All right, now on to the Indiana Fever, who came into training camp with a 15-man roster that they also have to narrow down to 12 players. Now, I will say this, guys. Uh, this is the first time I have ever seen so many cameras and so many, like, videos and photos taken at an Indiana Fever training camp. And that's because, of course, they have the number one player uh, in this year's draft and media darling, Caitlin Clark. And I just have to say that overall, the Indiana Fever social team is just killing it. Absolutely killing it. I love the walk-up reactions for day one. Take a look at those right now. First dance, go! Hold up, hold up! Year three, best year. Let's go! Shut up, shut up. It's been so long. I'm back! First day. And the thing is, it wasn't just that video, but it's the other videos, the interviews, and photos uh, that really um, 
you know, help to like let people know about what's happening day to day with the Indiana fever. Um, and just really helps in terms of social engagement and also just getting, giving people uh, more of a reason to, to really uh, understand the players on the squad. And that way they're more likely to buy tickets to games, more likely to watch the games on TV, more likely to buy merch, yada, yada, yada. Uh, this really is a, a awesome fact that they understood their assignment to sort of capitalize on all of the attention surrounding Caitlin Clark to benefit them as a program. And I'm really loving what uh, what the, the social team is doing for Indiana. Uh, now for Indiana as a team, uh, they have what I am dubbing the Fever Fab Four. That is Kelsey Mitchell, Nalissa Smith, Caitlin Clark, and of course, Aaliyah Boston. And I am truly, truly expecting to see an explosive team that will make the playoffs this year and be on the hunt for a championship in the next few years, not this year. So the, the people who are saying they're, they're gonna compete for a championship this year, I think that's a little bit too much. Uh, but in the future, absolutely. Uh, they have uh, the makings of a very good squad. Now, I will have a future video uh, where I really just sort of talk out why I'm calling uh, those four players the Fever Fat Four. Uh, so be on the lookout for that video uh, because, yeah, this, this Indiana team is going to be pretty good and definitely is going to be a team that needs to be on your must-watch list. All right, moving on to the Seattle Storm. They are having their first training camp in their new facilities. And guys, let's just take a quick second to marvel at how nice this practice facility looks. And also let's take in the fact that they have Jewel Lloyd, Skylar Diggins-Smith, and Neka Agumuke on the same team. Yeah, it is going to be a sight to see for sure. Seattle was bad last year, going 11 of 29 on the season. And yes, they got two of the best players in the WNBA to join their, their team, which is big. But the question is, are these two pieces in Skyler and NECA uh, going to lead to immediate success and a run for a WNBA championship? Or will we see some growing pains in Seattle? And the only, th the only, that's the question. And time will tell the answer to that question. Um, if you guys are wondering, uh, the training camp roster for the storm is at 16 players right now. And Noel Quinn and staff have to get that list down to 11 players. Yeah, that's right. When you have big name players like NECA, Skylar, Jewel, that means you, you, they eat up quite a bit of your uh, salary cap and uh, you don't have that much money to pay the rest of your players. So therefore, Seattle will only have 11 players at the start of the season on their roster. So um, yeah, there's gonna be a significant amount of cuts and we'll, we'll see who actually makes the final roster for the Seattle Storm. Now, the Washington Mystics took a break from training camp today to have their media day. So that's pretty fun. Um, uh, this Mystics team is a squad that is looking for a new identity. Uh, as they lost their PG-1 in Natasha Cloud, uh, and she decided to go to the Phoenix Mercury, they also lost Elena Deladon, who decided to sit this year out. You have Shakira Austin, who is back, yes, but also coming back from a huge um, hip injury uh, and, and hip surgery that she had. So uh, there's going to be some growing pains with that, um, literally having trying to get her back into, into game shape. Uh, so what's the new identity for this squad? That's the question. Um, and also the question is, what exactly will we see when season tips off? Um, and that that's what I'm wondering. And I think the answers are going to lie with Brittany Sykes, who for sure is going to be the leader and seemingly the new PG1 for the Washington Mystics going forward. Now, the new look Minnesota Lynx are locked in on training camp. And their players really are enjoying the amenities that the Minnesota Lynx have to offer their players. Energy that they showed that they wanted me, right? And then actually getting here and seeing their facilities, like I don't been on a couple teams, not to, you know, take it there, but I think it's top tier, man. It make you want to get in the gym, right? Like if you're a diamond, like it make you want to get better. It, it, it lets you know, like I got uh, elite company behind me. So it's, it, it's great around here, man. I love it. And the question that really lies for Minnesota in my books is, can they make that next step as a squad? Last year, they were pretty middle of the pack. Uh, sure, they have a superstar in Nafisa Collier who was just very, very good, uh, but they needed more. 
And I think they got more in free agency. Uh, but the question is, are they the right pieces to help get this squad back to their championship ways? Well, time will tell on that one and we will see what happens next. For the Los Angeles Sparks, we got the rookies acclimating themselves to the squad with Cameron Brink and Rakia Jackson. Good morning. Good, day two. Hi. Good morning. What's up, brother? What's up, brother? I just said that. Tuesday, Tuesday. They are also going to need to make an immediate impact for this squad going forward because I see them both as two rookies who will be immediate starters for their team. Now, personally, I see the Sparks as kind of a confusing team. Uh, they're a good team that has some good players, yes, but they are a team that still doesn't have an identity especially in the post. And that makes it tough and even tougher uh, that Azaray Stevens, um, who would have been their starting uh, center, is currently out due to injury. So I can't wait to see what Coach Kurt Miller comes up with for the squad and what the new look actually look like in the future. Now for the Dallas Wings, there are 16 players competing for a spot, though it has been announced that both Ashley Awusu and uh, Satu Sabli will not be participating in training due to injuries. Also, uh, Lou Lopez Sinisal will arrive to training camp late due to overseas commitments. And to stay on Satu Sabli for a little while longer, it is likely that she will be out for the entire first half of the year uh, due to a shoulder injury, which is an absolute loss for the squad because Satu really was the main player beyond, behind their success last year. Now, we for sure know that Arike Igumboala is going to be doing her thing this year um, in terms of like perimeter play. Also, there's Tira McCowan in the paint that's going to be doing her thing as well. But the question is, does the, does the Dallas Wings have enough of, of a bench uh, to not fall in the standings as they wait to get Satsu Sabli back and healthy for the second half of the year? That's the question um, because that's going to determine – their success uh, in, in terms of how far they actually go, how they can manage the first half of the season without, in my opinion, their star player. And while we're speaking of Dallas, last week the Dallas City Council uh, agreed uh, to allow the Dallas Wings to play downtown at Memorial Arena uh, starting in 2024. This is a 15-year agreement that will mean that the Wings can finally be able to move to Dallas into a larger arena. They currently play in Arlington right now. So they'll play in Arlington this season and in 2025. And in 2026, they will be in downtown Dallas. So question for you, are you in the Dallas area? Will you be getting tickets? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. All right, moving on to the New York Liberty. Uh, they start off camp with a whopping 18 players on their roster. And unlike other teams due to salary cap space, the New York Liberty can only have 11, man, 11 players on their team, which means seven players got to go. And for the Liberty, this kind of makes, this kind of is a make it or break a year for this team as both Stewie and Courtney, Courtney Vandersloot are both unrestricted free agents uh, next season. Last year in the finals, this team got exposed uh, for their defensive issues and also their ability to score under pressure. And with this team largely the same as, as, as the team of last year, minus some bench pieces, uh, the question is, does the Liberty really have enough to actually make a run at the Aces for the championship? Well, if training camp is showing anything, uh, they got a lot of promise, and we will see what happens when the regular season starts. Now on to the Phoenix Mercury, who have added two huge pieces to their squad in Natasha Cloud and Clea Copper, and a great role player in Rebecca Allen. Now the question is, does this team have what it takes to not just be a good team, but a championship contender? Uh, the squad brings in 17 players to training camp, and like the Liberty, the Mercury can only have 11 players on the roster. A thing to note is Dinah Tarazi is 41 years old right now. And I'm thinking that this is probably going to be her last season uh, as a WNBA player. So it's now or never for the Phoenix Mercury to actually make a run for the championship while Dana Tarazi is still on the roster. And from the looks of it, they're, they're raring to go. They're raring to go in Phoenix. 
Now on to the Atlanta Dream, who have added some new pieces to the squad, including Tina Charles, who makes her return to the WNBA. And also, I just have a random thing, but but uh, has anyone noticed that like Atlanta is like the new South Carolina or something like that? Like you have Letitia of me here on a unprotected contract. You have Alicia, Alicia Gray on a protected contract. You have Destiny Henderson on a training camp contract. Um, yeah, it really does. Like three South Carolina players on the same team. It, I mean, you know, South Carolina fans, are you are you rock, are you rocking with Atlanta right now? Because uh, y'all got some players on on that squad. Let me know. Um, anyway, uh, for Atlanta, they played very well last season, winning some games that I didn't think they were actually going to win. And ultimately, uh, this team is looking pretty good this year. Um, and this season really is about taking that next step. Sure, Ryan Howard is the leader on the squad, uh, both just in general, also on the offensive end. Uh, but with the additions of Ariel Powers and Jordan Canada, I think we just might have a very, very, very good Atlanta Dream team on our hands. All right, now on to my Chicago Sky. We have a lot of new faces from the coach on down, and we welcome in two of college basketball's biggest names and Camilla Cardozo and Angel Reese. And the question is, what culture does this team have going forward? Sure, we have some very defensive-minded players, and in likely defense will be a calling card for us this season. Uh, but what exact what exactly our offense looks like is still TBD. Uh, time will tell, but Coach Teaspoon seems uh, to feel very, very good about where the team is headed. What kind of foundation do you want to build here at the Sky? Well, it's important for us to have an incredible culture. And the culture, when you, when you see our young women, there it is. There it is. It's about people are your culture. And the young women that we have on board, I think we're in pretty good shape. All right, now on to the Connecticut Sun, who is another team that will likely only be able to have 11 people on their roster um, to start the season. The Connecticut Sun is a very gritty and hard-nosed team. They've been that way for a long time. And they brought in some players to kind of lessen the load for the post. Now, for sure, Connecticut has their post play on lock with Alyssa Thomas, Dewana Bonner, and Brianna Jones. Um, and it ultimately is going to be their guard play that is going to make the difference going forward for the squad. Um, and the thing to note is that Brianna Jones is coming back from Achilles tear last season. So how long it actually takes her to get back to her usual self is up in the air. Now, guys, let me know your thoughts at the start of this training camp season. Um, let me know who you're excited about seeing, uh, who you're not, not excited about seeing, where you think some of these teams are going to go for the season. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. All right, next up, let's quickly talk about signature shoes. And the question I have for you is, is Asia Wilson getting a signature shoe? Is it in the works? Well, it seems that way. As Nike reveals their AIR concept shoe for Asia Wilson. Now, the look of the shoe is really interesting. Um, and that's because Nike is using artificial intelligence to help them make up the shoe. Yeah. AI is literally taking over everything. Now, the concept shoe was unveiled with a host of other shoes, including uh, shoes for runners, Dina Asher Smith, Sha Shakari Richardson, and fellow hooper, Victor Wimbayama. So for sure, Asia's final shoe won't look like this, likely. Uh, but what do you think about the look of it right now? Would you cop a shoe like this? And just like Asia Wilson said herself, always remember what is delayed is not denied. All right, on to more shoe news. Jewel Lloyd's PEs are about to drop. So if you don't know, Jewel Lloyd has been signed with Nike since 2015 and has been the face of the G2 Cut 3s since Nike launched them this season, or this year, I should say. Um, now, while the, the PEs isn't a signature shoe, it still is pretty awesome uh, for a player to be able to design and release um, a, a shoe that they had a, a part in making, or at least designing. Uh, so you can see what they look like on the screen, and personally, I think they look pretty awesome. So are you picking up these PEs? Uh, let me know in the chat. Also, guys, there is no word yet on when exactly these shoes will be released. So FYI. Uh, the WNBA has two current players with signature shoes, and both of them are on the New York Liberty, uh, Stewie and Sabrina Inescu. Uh, Christina Williams recently asked both of them about the status of signature shoes 
in the WNBA, and here is what they said. Yeah, I mean, I think that there's no question that Asia should have a signature shoe. Um, for what she's done for this league, how she continues to, to build herself on and off the court. Um, and I think, I'm, you know, as a, a friend of hers, as a competitor of hers, I'm, I'm really hoping that um, she gets that because she deserves it. And also, you know, like you said, there's a lot of people throughout this league that deserve it. And, you know, I feel like we're, we're moving at a, a snail's pace with the signatures. On the woman's side. I, mean, I think there's there's a change and that's starting to understand that it starts with representation and to be able to do that in the in the W there's kind of a turning tide and understanding that women deserve to have a shoe women of color deserve to have a shoe we all have a story to tell and we all have people to inspire and so I think I'm really excited to see how that's going to continue to grow obviously being one of the first ones in the W to have one but understanding there's going to be so many people that are going to come after me and um, understanding what that means for the young little girl that's up and coming and watching our games and showing up to games and understand that they can have a signature shoe one day because they see all these W players having one and so hopefully brands can continue to double down on that investment and understanding that it, it's about time to continue to do that for us in this league and in other sports as well. All right, now on to college news. This past week, we saw some huge player announcements, and uh, we start with USC, who not only added this year's biggest transfer in Kiki Irafin from Stanford, they also added Talia Von Olhoffen from Oregon State. And we start with six foot three Kiki Irafin, who actually will be returning home to LA uh, as a member of the Trojan. Uh, this past season with Stanford, Kiki has had had a breakout year with 19.4 points a game, 11 rebounds, 2.3 assists per game for the Stanford Cardinal. Uh, Kiki truly is a phenomenal player that will absolutely, in my opinion, dominate for USC next season. Uh, now, she hasn't spoken specifically on why she chose USC, but it is going to be in her hometown. And the fact that she will be still be on the West Coast and play for a team that will compete for a national championship next year, next season probably was a selling point for her. Now on to Talia Von Olhoffen. So if you don't know about Talia, she is a five foot 11 point guard who also can play a shooting guard role. Uh, she averaged 10.7 points a game last season, five, five assists a game and 4.1 rebounds a game. Also, she can get some steals as well. And uh, she is known as the, the player who really did lead the Beavers uh, last season, specifically from the guard position. And one thing I'm excited about is to see how she how she how she operates at USC. She likely is going there as their starting point guard. Um, and here's what Talia had to say about the move. She said, "For me, it was just the opportunities in LA playing for Coach Lindsey. I think the pro style they play translates to the WNBA, which is my ultimate goal. In talking to Coach Lindsey, they're exactly what I'm looking for in every way." And I was exactly what they needed, a combo guard that's a veteran, been through the wars over my career, to help the freshmen out as they adjust to college basketball, as everyone does. Being able to play point guard and play wing, depending on which freshmen are going, and kind of be versatile in that way, and just bring leadership and help them throughout the, process, the whole process is going to be super fun. Yeah, that is what she said. Um, guys, we are about to see... Juju, Kiki, Talia, and a whole lot of freshmen um, do their thing at USC next year. And it looks like we may just have a battle of who is the real USC next season. What do y'all think about it? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Also, Talia's former teammate, Reagan Beers, also chose a new squad. And no, it is not UConn. It's Oklahoma, where she is from. The six foot two post player really shined last season. Um, as a sophomore at Oregon State, battling injuries and ultimately finishing the year averaging a double-double. 17.5 points a game, 10.3 rebounds a game. And she just decided to say, hey, I'm going home. Uh, this is a huge addition to Oklahoma as they head over to the SEC next season. And a huge shocker for UConn fans because a lot of them were saying, Reagan is going to UConn. Look how many, uh, look how many players are, are following her on UConn. Guys, that is what they do. When, when a team is actively trying to recruit you, their players will follow you on, on Instagram and on, and on social media. That does not mean that it is a lock 
that 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 um that player is going there. So for all the UConn people who said that Reagan was going to to uh to UConn because of of the people she followed the people at, at UConn and 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 who the UConn players fo- like them following her like you can't read the tea leaves like that and <laughs> just look at followers to to know what's going on at least in this case. Uh, now the reason why uh, we have seen an absolute collapse of the roster at Oregon State and other some other Pac-12 schools is because the Pac-12 is effectively dead. Uh, and Oregon State is heading to play in the West Coast Conference, and this is no offense to the West Coast Conference. Um, top players in the country don't want to play against other mid-major teams. They want to play in the Power Five. Now it's a Power Four. Um, they want to play for the biggest teams in the country. They want to. They want to be on TV, um, and that's not something you're going to get in the WCC. So that's why we have seen uh, that major change with teams like Oregon State who have lost a lot of their top players. Um, There will be a video I will be making on conference realignment soon, so look out for that. All right, and finally, we wrap up NCAA Talk talking about Coach Tamika Reed, the Jackson State head coach who Gina Oriema said this about. I wanted to commend her on her season, you know, going undefeated in your league. I don't care what league you play in. I don't care who you play against. You play you know, 18 conference games and you win them all and you win your conference tournament, um, that's a hell of a job. And it's not like the first time, right? I mean, she's been doing this for quite some time now there. And a lot of these coaches that work like that and have tremendous success and put together put together great teams and have put together a terrific program, nobody knows about them. They certainly don't get on TV enough. And they certainly don't get enough recognition. Um, and I wanted to let her know that and that I wanted to, um, I I wanted to put myself out there and for her. And I think we need coaches like her, um, to be celebrated and, um, bigger schools need to not keep recycling coaches that are let go by other power five schools, whatever you want to call them that they should start looking outside the box a little bit because there's a lot of great coaches out there and she's one of them. Now, coach Tamika Reed has had a fantastic career at Jackson State. She won 125 games, lost 154. She won five regular season SWAC championships. Uh, She made it to the NCAA tournament three times and she was also able to coach two players who made it to the WNBA draft and were actually drafted in Angel Jackson this season, who is currently with the Las Vegas Aces and Amisha Williams holiday. Um, coach Reed is fantastic. Four time SWAT coach of the year, three time HBCU national coach of the year. Um, and a whole, whole host of other things that she was able to accomplish during her time at Jackson state. So with all of that, it was a matter of time before someone snatched her up. And that's exactly what the University of North Carolina at Charlotte did. Today, they had their introductory press conference, and here is what was said. From the moment I stepped on campus, after having a conversation with Mike and Reagan, I knew this was the right place at the right time for me to begin a new journey. I am very thankful to be able to lead such a first-class program. During my interview, I had the pleasure of meeting our executive team of administrators. I've had a lot of coaches to reach out to me over the time I've been hired. And one word that I heard consistently amongst everybody was family. And if you know me, you know family means the world. And Jackson State University Athletics Director Ashley Robinson. I want to thank him for his support and for allowing me to win many, many championships at Jackson State University. I am forever grateful for my HBCU family and experiences. To all of my former players and fans, you will always hold a special place in my heart. Over the years, I have kept my head down. I have worked hard. I have burned both ends of the candle. I have waited patiently for an opportunity like this. I always wanted a jersey with my name on the back. That was really cute. I have waited patiently for a place 
where we can continue to win championships. I want it to be somewhere where that can translate from where I am currently. And this is the place I found. And a great foundation has been laid. And I want to thank you to the current players. I've talked to you guys, and one thing I've heard consistently is that you love this place, that you have positioned yourself for greatness, and that you are hungry to win championships. Well, you have the right one. I have no doubt what we will do together. We will not just be the standard, we will be the true definition of the gold standard. We will work hard on and off the court. We will carry ourselves with great dignity and integrity. We will be the most trendy, the most attractive, and the most winningest program in Division I basketball. We will do things the right way and have fun doing it. I'm talking to you ladies. We'll be one mind, one vision, with one goal. We'll be top students and graduate. And I must say, I want more hardware. I want more trophies. I want more rings. I want more championships. And this will be the new location for where the rings reside. Great job, Mike. To all the AAU coaches and high school coaches and junior college coaches, you will see me and hear from me often. We want to make sure we have every elite recruit on the campus of Charlotte. My vision for the program is to prepare our student athletes for college, for life after college, excuse me, through a disciplined program built on character and integrity. I want my players to be great ambassadors for the program and have a strong presence in the community. We want to graduate our players, push our players to get drafted into the WNBA, help players play overseas, and see them in their professions of choice. My style of play will be up-tempo. We will get after it. We will be extremely tough defensively. And our goal is to be number one. I cannot wait to get started with you all. Now guys, Coach Reed is a winner. And she has a winning mentality. And it's, you know, she's about to take Charlotte to new heights, and I just can't wait to see it. Uh, so shout out to Coach Tamika Reed. Congratulations. You absolutely deserve this, and I cannot wait to see what you are able to do for the green. All right, and for this week, we end with Candace Parker announcing her retirement from the game of women's basketball. Now, if you all want to hear my commentary about it, you can watch the video right up here, uh, but I did want to leave you all with what Candace Parker means to WNBA players all around. Parker announcing her retirement. I mean, you have some commonalities there with USA Basketball, mm -hmm. obviously in the W, but what comments do you have about yeah. her long tenured career? Yeah, Candace is a legend in her own right. I mean, when you talk about women's basketball and the landscape that it is today and the map that she was able to put, you know, women's basketball on. I mean, Candace is the first rookie that came this league and like really shook it up in her first year. Um, definitely a legend and praises and flowers and everything to her because she's the reason like our AU team had the Tennessee colors and it was only because I mean you know like we all know who Candace Parker is and what she's done for this league um, obviously she went out the way that she wanted to and she's done everything in this game she doesn't owe anybody anything um, and so I'm thankful to have played against her uh, played with her I think on one all-star team um, but she's done a tremendous job of putting women's sports on the map, women's basketball on the map, and representing the W in its highest light. One W player that when I was hurt, you know, had, had tried to reach out to help me um, find someone to rehab with, and um, that was kind of the first person that ever acknowledged kind of what I was going through, and she doesn't know probably how much that meant to me, but to just kind of feel seen by someone else um, meant the world to me and kind of gave me some hope in life in my second year in the league, and so obviously have a great relationship with her and what she's built in the WNBA and for herself is something you can't into, put into words and you know she's left the game in a lot better hands than when she found it and um, a lot of that has to go, go to her so I'm so excited to see what she's going to accomplish um, post basketball but um, I give her all the flowers that she deserves. She's definitely uh, a pillar of the W. We always joke about when you see the record books it's like somebody in Candace Parker did it. You know she's like in every record in the W. Uh,
been into it for all these years. Um, definitely remember some of my welcome to the league moments being against Candace. Um, but definitely wish her nothing but the best of luck in her next chapter. What? Wow. Like, like effective immediately? Wow. Um, I think, obviously, Candice has had an amazing career. I think that it's like a, I don't know, I'm a little bit sad about it because it, you love going up against her and the, the legend that she is, but um, what she's done on this court and, and off the court has been amazing for our league and um, really appreciate everything that she's done to kind of help me get to where I am. Um, yeah, that really did shock me, um, but we'll, we'll definitely miss her this season. I love you. Thank you for bringing me my first WNBA championship. I learned so much from you. Again, you are a GOAT in my eyes. Love you. My favorite moment with Candace Parker was her just casually walking into our practice like she's not Candace Parker. And I just look over and I say, oh my gosh, that's Candace Parker. And um, that was pretty cool. You know, she gave me some good advice and I'm not gonna tell y'all it, it's sacred. But, um, you know, just talking to her and what she's brought to the women's game, you know, the versatility, being tall, that's something that I aspire to be. So just having that to look up to just means everything. And, you know, congratulations, Candace. You very much deserve it. And I'm so proud of you. Um, first of all, congrats. I'm so proud of you. I'm so honored that I got to play with you for two years, that we got to win together, um, and that I got, got to become a friend of you, yours. Um, enjoy retirement. Thank you so much for all you did for the game, for me personally, and just for women's basketball. You're a legend, don't you ever forget it. Love you! I just want to give a thanks to Candice and everything that she's done for the game. She's my first ever um, basketball player that I actually looked up to, and just the impact that she had has trailblazed the way for the rest of us to uh, keep it going. And shout out to the Tennessee alumni as well. You know, we've had great talks while I was at Tennessee, and I'll hold those conversations with me forever. Uh, Thank you, Candace Parker, for everything you've done for the game. CP, I grew up coming to Sparks games. You've impacted the game so much. Thank you for being a trailblazer. Our opportunity to play with, with Candace on the national team in Russia, obviously in the WNBA. Um, you know, the way she changed basketball um, at her size, being able to do what she did, really opened up, I think, the door to seeing a new way of, of playing basketball, especially on, on the women's side. And um, what an incredible career, honestly. She's done some things that um, you, you just... Uh, you know, not many people even dream of doing and, you know, what she did at Tennessee, uh, it's just incredible. And, uh, you know, uh, what she's doing on the other side too now, being on TNT and opening all those opportunities for women. I mean, she's really a trailblazer in a lot of ways. Man, it was just one of those gut punches. I mean, when you're looking at a GOAT uh, like Candace, uh, now not playing in our league is crazy. And I think I never thought I would see today, honestly, where I'm like, no, that's Candace Parker. But she has done so much to this league. She's given so much to this league, uh, to this team. And I, I was just honored to say that I was her peak teammate and I could share the court with her. But it's been a, a great journey for her. Uh, she will forever be my GOAT. Uh, no matter what, no one has done things that Candace has done. No one has seen things Candace has seen and uh, I am super I, I hate to see her go to retirement but if it's best for her and her health I'm all for it I'm a supporter 100% but uh love you Candace love you girl we got you no matter what my goodness congrats big homie it's been an honor it's been a privilege thankful for everything that you have done will done and will continue to do you are truly one of one. Enjoy retirement, man. Go drink some of that good vino like I know you will. And keep doing your thing, man. Happy to know you, happy to have worked with you, played with you, and won with you. Love you, man. Hi, Candace. I just want to say thank you for everything that you have done for our game to help it grow. I mean, you have been a role model to me since I was watching you play at Tennessee. And to win a championship with you was everything. Continue to be you and help grow our game. Thank you. Love you. Hey Candice, I just want to say congrats on an amazing career. If you already know this, you are my favorite player. And the reason why I went to the University of Tennessee, I know Pat is just so proud of everything that you've done. And I just wish you the best of luck in retirement. Go Lady Wolves. Watch Candace Parker, I mean, she's been an amazing player, a big guard, I always admire her. When I came here, since I couldn't get 10, I wanted to get three, but I was like, wait, Candace is gonna get her jersey retired very soon. So I knew she was gonna get her jersey retired soon because she's an amazing player amazing mom, amazing person, and she's always been a super inspiring to me, so I always will love her and watch her game. You know, for, for myself, 
um, just because I would have loved to have her with us this year. Um, on the other hand, I know exactly what it feels like when you know when it's time, it's time, and your body tells you when it's time. It's not even what your mind or your heart is saying, it's what your body's saying. And so um, she's somebody who obviously you, you're not going to replace her, not on this team, not in, in the scheme of um, in the world of women's basketball, because to me, she's kind of like the first, like she's kind of a goat amongst goats in the sense of uh, she changed the game. She changed what it meant to be uh, a positional basketball player, right? Because she played all positions. And I think she's really the, the one when you talk about uh, people that are now playing and coming up, you know, they practice Candace Parker's moves. Candace has been, you know, iconic since I was a little girl. So it's really sad, honestly. I was, I was shocked and blown away, but I'm also, you know, happy for her to start her, her start her life as a normal human being, especially because she has a family. I think it's just like, wow. I don't think anybody expected it to happen, but you know, she came in the league doing great things. So just to her to leave the game better than she came into it was just big in itself, and you know, I really appreciate everything she's done, and even just watching her. I mean, Candace Parker has always been someone that I consider a role model. I think she's the reason that I've just loved basketball so much because at her size, being able to do what she does, handle the ball the way she does, shoot the ball the way she does, like someone that's tall growing up, wanting to continue in the sport. I mean, she was just a major piece to me. That was huge. You know, that was one of my role models. You know, the reason I started playing basketball, the reason I was number three, you know, when I was young. So just playing against her and, you know, her giving me tips on the floor, you know, that was big for me and, you know, Congrats on a huge career for her. What she's done for the game is tremendous. Um, she's also Adidas athlete, so I've spent some time with her. Um, she's tremendous. You know, she's she's changed the game for us. You know, on and off the court, just being able to be on TV and always present. You know, just showing up for the women's sports. And then as the back the basketball stuff, it's a whole resume of things that she's done to just to kind of change the game. And I'm sure she's still going to change the game with just being on TV and just still being around basketball. Retirement earlier today, like, you know, when I say the name of Candace, what kind of comes to your mind? You know, um, so much, you know, what she's meant to our game, what she's meant to our league, but also to me personally, I started in this league in 2015, 10 years ago, and, you know, Candace was a mainstay here and helped me get started in this league as an assistant with the Sparks and what she meant uh, to that era and was the leader the true leader of that team. So I got my start coaching Candace Parker in this league and that tremendous um, Spark team. So I was very blessed to be able to learn from those guys in my first year. All right, so I thank you all so, so much for watching this video. Please be sure to hit that like button on your way out. Hit that subscribe button if you have not subscribed to this channel. Shout out to the folks on Patreon who are actively supporting this channel every month. If you want to do that, you can go. you can do so at... Uh, www.patreon.com slash Quita Love Sports. Until next time, guys. Bye-bye.